So in this video, I'm going to be building a budget-friendly power station out of the Harbor Freight front cargo box on this off-road trailer. The power station will have solar capabilities and we can also charge it with the vehicle using my Charger One system. We're also going to install some rock lights, additional circuitry so we can turn things on and off and expand on later. So that's the goal of this video. Let's get to work. Now this is the Harbor Freight cargo box. We installed a few videos back on the trailer build. I think it's going to be a good candidate to build this budget style you know, power station and it's got plenty of space. We'll be pulling out all the stuff and we'll get into modifying the box itself to install the battery. Now the battery I've chosen is this 100 amp hour, 12 volt lithium PO4 battery. It has a 110 volt AC to DC adapter for quickly charging it. And it also comes with the capabilities of solar charging. It's got a built-in BMS. So you've got voltage current, overcurrent, and temperature protection, which is great, especially when you know, you're know you changing environments from hot to cold and different weathers throughout the season. The battery itself seems pretty rugged and I think we'll get a lot of use out of it for this build. Now the first thing we need to do is get the battery secured inside the cargo box and I knew that I needed some kind of battery tie down kit to keep this battery from bouncing around inside of this box. So I picked up this $15 kit. It's got some stainless steel bracketry and screws. It's really simple to get it installed. I set the battery on a piece of cardboard, trace it out, cut out a template so I can get the size of the battery inside the box and then set the brackets down and marked where the locations where I wanted the straps to essentially tie down the battery. And we'll go ahead and start drilling some holes with a 7 30 seconds drill bit and then come behind it with some spray paint just to make sure that the holes don't rust and then we'll go ahead and bolt those brackets down. Now for securing these brackets, the kit does come with these screws, but for these type of screws, I tend to want to stay away from, especially on this trailer build where things will be vibrating and could possibly come loose. So uh, I've decided to use some machine screws. They're just 10 30 seconds by one inch in length, and I'll run some nylock nuts underneath that. So they're fast and secure. I don't have to worry about them coming loose later on. Once the brackets are bolted down, We'll go ahead and feed the straps through the brackets and position our battery in place. The tie down kit was fairly inexpensive, really simple to install and it utilizes these cinch down buckles to kind of cinch down the battery real nice and secure inside the box. So now that we can easily remove this battery in case we need to replace it sometime in the future, electrically I wanted to do the same. So I picked up this 50 amp rated Anderson connector with seven gauge wires and with already crimped on eye fittings to bolt down and fasten to the battery. With this connector in place, we can work on the other side that will bolt to our fuse block. The fuse block I'll be using for this power station is a 100 amp rated fuse block that can feed up to 630 amp max circuits. I'll bolt the Anderson connector in place using the red wire on the plus or positive side terminal and the black wire on the negative side. We'll mark the holes, drill them, paint them, add the fuses for each circuit, and then we'll go ahead and mount that fuse block on the inside of the box. For the bolts, I'm just using 8 30 seconds bolts with nylock nuts to secure the fuse block to the inside of the box. Now because this battery comes with an AC to DC charger and wanting to keep the power station theme, I purchased this panel mount inlet for 110 volts AC. That way I can keep the charger in with the battery at all times and have the convenience of grabbing an extension cord and charging up the battery when I'm near or around AC power. The inlet plug is rated at 15 amps and it's pretty simple to get it installed. I'll take a two inch hole saw and drill the hole. Then I'll transfer the four holes over to the panel and drill those out, paint all of the bare surfaces and we'll bolt this thing onto the panel and connect the charger to the panel inlet and charge the battery. And for the charger adapter itself, I'll tie it down to the battery, that way it's secure. 
Now for this next part, I've got two switch panels, a six in one and a five in one where we can access our charging ports for solar. We'll have some cigarette lighter sockets, some Anderson pull connectors. We'll be able to switch a few circuits on and off and also be able to know the voltage on the battery and be able to turn the unit on and off. The switch panels face plates are aluminum and the components are considered marine grade. So they should be water resistance and are pre-wired for 12 volt circuits. I will be changing the original configuration of these panels with different components, but the disassembly of all the wiring and components will be required anyway, so I can map out the holes to cut out and drill for mounting the face plates to the power station's box. I'll start by squeezing the locking clips on each of the blade connectors with my needle nose pliers, removing the wires from the back of each component. Then I'll remove the locking nuts on the back of the components to remove them from the face plates. To remove the switches, just squeeze the tabs on the back side and they easily slide off the plate with a pair of channel locks. I'll start by clamping the aluminum face plate on the box to trace with a marker and transfer the holes I'll need to cut and drill. I'm going to take a step back and just double check that exactly where I want before cutting out the holes and drilling. Now I've got the markings I need, I'm going to reassemble these switch panels. These are the 15 to 45 amp rated panel mount Anderson connectors that I bought separately, one for solar charging input and the other two are for my refrigerator and diesel heater. They come with these wire end crimps that snap into the back of the connector to hold the wires you choose for each circuit. Each kit also comes with another set of connectors so you can modify or make up your own devices power cables for accessing power. The switches on these panels just snap back in and all we need to do now is mount the panel and wire the components. I'll start by drilling several holes before I start cutting with cutting tools. These are the outer holes that are going to bolt the switch panels to the box. I'll be using my four and a half inch angle grinder with a cutoff wheel to cut out most of the material. You can see I added some blue masking tape that way if I you know, slip the tool off it doesn't scratch up any of the paint. I'll take my deburring sanding tool and just kind of shape the outer edges of the box so the components will fit through. I'll check to make sure that each panel fits and all the holes line up and then we'll do one last deburring to make sure there's no sharp edges and I'll come through and paint everything with some black spray paint. After the paint dries we can bolt the switch panels to the box. Now the switch panels did come with their own hardware for fastening to the box but I decided those screws would probably come loose later on so I picked up my own hardware. I'll be using 8 8 30 seconds machine screws with a tapered head and nylock nuts. Now I can clean everything up, put the battery and the charging adapter back in nice and secure, and we can start working on building up the electrical circuits. I'll be using this terminal assortment kit. It's got all of the fittings that we need to land the wires. I'll use 14 gauge black wire for the negative and 14 gauge orange wire for the positive sides of each circuit. I'll start by building up all the grounds in the circuits, cutting the ground wires to length and stripping the ends of the wires insulation so we can get to the bare conductors. Then I'll crimp on these eyelet fittings and bolt a loom of grounds from the fuse block and feed them over to our electrical circuits. The first ground I want to land here is for the solar charging system into the Anderson pole connector. I'll crimp on the end fitting and snap it into the back of the black terminal and I'll continue to do that for each Anderson connector. A quick tip on these, you want to make sure the end snaps all the way into the blade. I find that using a small pick to hold down the blade inside the connector while pushing in the crimp on the back side helps with the engagement of the wire crimp into the Anderson connector. Then I'll do the same as we did for all the ground wires to all the positive wires to finish off and complete those circuits. With the battery connected and power supplied to our fuse block, we can now check out the front operating control panel here that I've set up for this power station. Now I have a main switch that I can flip on. It checks the battery voltage. 
for on bad battery um, display. And then that switch also turns on this 12 volt cigarette lighter socket, which is rated for 15 amps. And this USB jack, um, it can supply up to 4.8 amps of power, so that's pretty decent. And then it also supplies power to these three circuits through this switch. Now this one we're gonna set up for our rock lights, and these two I haven't yet decided what I'm going to hook these circuits up to, maybe a floodlight or something we'll see here in the future. But we also have two circuits of room for expansion off of that switched circuit. Now, as far as dedicated circuits, this one here is a dedicated 20 amp for the 12 volt socket. So I've got power here all the time, even with the switch off. And this one is the Anderson pole connector, which is rated for 15 amps, just how I wired it. And that goes directly through the fuse block to the battery to uh, solar charge this uh, battery, the lithium battery. And then two more dedicated circuits. These are rated for 20 amps each for Anderson pole connector outlets. This is gonna be great for my diesel heater and my refrigerator. So really happy with that. That's how I wired everything up with room for expansion. So I'm pretty happy with the wiring. Everything seems to work properly. And now I wanna focus on setting up my solar gear to charge this battery. Now my solar panel itself comes with the various connectors, but it didn't come with any SAE connectors that will match up to the in and outputs of my MTT solar charge controller. Now the solar charge controller I went with is this one. It's an inline controller between the solar panel and the battery. Now to connect from the solar panel to the battery, there's gonna be a series of different connections to make that MTT controller fit in line. So with that, I ended up purchasing a SAE to Anderson pole connector adapter cable. Now I'm gonna build another cable, SAE in to Anderson out using the connectors that came in the Anderson pole panel mount kit. To build your own cable, it's pretty simple. Slide the red and the black pieces together to form your Anderson connector. Then take your cable and strip the insulation off of the conductor. Crimp on your end crimp fittings. Trim off some of the rubber on the back end of the sheath. Slip that over your cable and then snap in your end crimps into the connector. Again, you might have to use a pick to hold down the blade to help get that crimp into lock inside that connector. And there we have it, a nice cable made up to adapt the solar panel to charge the battery. So the wiring is pretty much complete on the trailer. We'll go ahead and test that out, but it's pretty sunny outside. So I'm gonna set up my solar panels and we'll start charging this battery. And you wanna make sure that this is set every time for the lithium battery so it has the right charge profiles. Now I'm gonna go ahead and hook this up. Just wanna make sure the polarity is correct on all of these cables. We'll go ahead and set up the solar panel. This is my 140 watt solar panel. It opens up and it kinda has these kickstands on the back. It can lean up to face the sun. So on the MTT controller, I'm seeing we're getting about 14.6 volts and zero amps. So let's go ahead and connect this Anderson pole connector into our battery. Now for the controller, we can switch between AGM and a lithium, which is gonna be the far battery on the right, and it's highlighted green. At the moment, we are at 75% battery capacity moving on our way up to 100%, and I'm getting 2.93 amps into the battery from the solar panel, and we're sitting about 13.6 volts, so awesome. Both my refrigerator and diesel heater uses this style of cable end, but on the other end, I had eyelets to land on a battery, so I made my own Anderson connector for the diesel heater and refrigerator, and I'm just testing it out real quick, and it works. Now for the rock lights, I went with these on Amazon. They're RGB rock lights with LED chips and they're 12 volts and considered to be low current devices. Now there are six of them and there's some adapter cables, some splitters from one to six, a controller and quite a few bits and pieces of hardware and zip ties and things for mounting these to the undercarriage of a vehicle or a trailer in my case. 
Now, again, these come with screws, and I'm not really fond of screws because they could back out, and maybe on the highway or something, one of the lights fall off. So instead of drilling a bunch of holes throughout the chassis, I decided to use magnets for attaching these LED rock lights to and throughout the chassis of the trailer for six lights. It's going to be two magnets per light. I thought 20 pounds was going to be sufficient enough because these LEDs are fairly light and to attach the magnets to each light, I'm just going to use a through bolt, 8 seconds, one inch with an 8 seconds nylock nut, and we'll just bolt the magnets to each LED rock light. Now I do want to put one up here in front by the trailer jack. That way I can see the ground and where I'm pushing the trailer around wherever I have it parked. The second location I came up with was inside of the box. Why not have some light in there if I'm gonna be in there at night? Then I knew I wanted two rock lights, one on each wheel near the fenders, ran the cables through the expanded metal of the trailer back to the main controller. Now I had two remaining rock lights. I was gonna put them in the back, but I decided to put them on the deck lid. So that way when the deck lid is up, we can have light on the cargo inside the basket in case you know we need light or something at night. So that's pretty much all six locations covered. And then I went into wiring the controller. Now I had to drill a hole to put a strain relief for the cable inside the box. I decided this location was best for the main power cables to come out of the box and feed the power to all the individual lights. Then we can mount the strain relief and get that secured to the box and start plugging in all the lights into the six to one connector. The two lights on the deck lid needed the cable extensions. And then once everything was plugged in, I went ahead and went back through all the wiring and cleaned it up with zip ties and cable hangers. I put two cable hangers near the deck lid and another cable hanger right where the wheel jack is. Now for securing the electrical box, all I did was run a zip tie around it with the excess cable and a washer and hung up the washer on one of those longer bolts that secure the switch panel to the cargo box. Then now all I have to do is complete the wiring, land the ground to the ground side on the fuse block, and then the positive wire onto the output of the switch. There it is. We have six working RGB LED rock lights. All right, everybody, that's going to wrap it up for this video. I had a lot of fun building this power station out of the Harbor Freight cargo box. It makes sense. Now the battery has a home and I've got some switches. I got room for expansion and I got rock lights, which are pretty cool. And now I can run my diesel heater, my refrigerator off of here. I have solar capabilities. If you guys have any questions or comments, leave those in the description box below. I'll leave all the links to all the materials and everything I used in the description box below. And uh, thanks for staying around and we'll see you guys in the next video. Have a good day. Peace out.